Queue up PC. Take graphic. to Peter's car. Yeah, level check on mic two. Bring that up. Drama three. This is drama. Smooth pan. You're not even there. Heather, your ex-boyfriend's here. Mr. Shaver, hi there. Nice to meet you, sir. Good morning, sir. Welcome to our hotel. Very excited about you staying with us today. How about this weather, huh? Let's get you inside where it's warm. I, on behalf of uh, the entire hotel staff and myself, uh, I, our condolences, sir. Very, very sorry about your loss. Your suite is available. Uh, we'll get you up and just relax. Peter Shaver, before you say anything. I want you back. Come here. Wait. Let me finish. Actually, I was going... The thing is... I... I think I love you, and... I don't think I'm gonna meet anyone better than you. I... To deserve to be with you. I just need you to be open to it. Because I want you back. I don't think you ever really had me. You didn't really hear me know me that much. Not really. Well, let's 
give it another shot, and I'll get to know you. Yeah, I don't think we should have ever been together in the first place. So, we definitely shouldn't give it another chance. But I, I want good things for you. Seriously. You know. Good luck today, sir. Someone should be up shortly to get you ready. Take a load off. Are you shocked? Um, sir? Um, um, yeah. Yeah. Um, no. Um, let's just, uh, Never really had makeup on much before. Oh, okay. Well, I forgive you. So, I'm just gonna get set up over here and the AD should be in soon while I get you camera ready. And he's just gonna talk to you about, you know, technical stuff, everything. He just got hung up on set. Oh, on set, sure. This isn't a movie, Dad. I know. A local transgender woman was found murdered in her family's home here in Kevin, Oklahoma, early this morning. Upon responding to a report of a disturbance at the residence at 6.30 a.m., police discovered the 24-year-old victim's body. A police spokesman told us here at CSRV the person had trauma consistent with homicide. Further reporting has revealed the cause of death to be a gunshot wound. There have been no arrests, and police have yet to determine a motive.
Would you like to talk about this? This evening, local businessman and hopeful political candidate Peter Shaver will be interviewed in prime time by renowned reporter Sharon Ward, where he will presumably give his long-awaited response to the horrific string of gun-related deaths last month that, in a shocking and ironic twist, touched his own. No. There's a, there's a small little town for my long-term listeners called Kevin, Oklahoma. Now, one of my early callers, when we, when we first started doing this thing, he, uh, he, he called in from that town, and I, I wouldn't even know anything about this smaller town had it not been for him. But uh, we, we, we got to chatting it up because uh, that, that's what I do. You know, I'm loyal to my listeners. I like to know where they're from. I like to get connected with them. And so uh, I started chatting it up with this guy, and I like to keep my finger on the pulse of this place. It's a very interesting place. So they're running a story right now, okay, about a transgender. Yeah. And so, so, so anytime it's a story about a transgender, only one or two things can be talked about. One, they've, up, they've sexualized another child, touched them all in inappropriate places, just out here just doing the devil's work or two they're dead now in this case one's dead one of them just he just happens to be dead right now I'll say, I'll say this for the record murder is wrong okay that, 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 that is completely unacceptable however I want to make it be known I don't support the transgender in any way shape form or fashion they're despicable to me okay I, I don't do it. I, I get worked up just just thinking about them. Just and this this guy or, or girl or whatever he identified with at the time was probably some 500 pound ugly loser, okay, who couldn't hack it. But that's just what it was, right? And, and, and he was probably just sucking down government assistance and sucking down Cheetos. And if he wasn't doing that, then he was sucking down and terrorizing your kid in a restroom he had no business in in the first place. It's crazy. That's that's so crazy to me. I mean, am I right, people? Are you, are you listening? Are you listening with your eyes? Because that's, that's how you have to do it. You have to see what I'm saying. If we start to get behind, we rally and champion, champion them on. Then, then this is the precursor to, to robots just taking over humanity. That's how that's how crazy this is. You understand what I'm saying to you? You guys understand what I'm saying? Like, these are people who are so just 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 boggled down by society. They are insecure. Right? They can't deal with the realness of the world, so they want to switch it up. They just want to, they want to shake things up. Right? This is a case where someone who couldn't hack it probably killed himself. I mean, everything's not in yet. You, can, you, can't, you can't say either or. This guy could have killed himself. I mean, guys, we're talking about a group of people who have the highest, the highest suicide rate in the world in the world I got the stats right here to prove this I didn't, I'm not just pulling this out my ass people the numbers don't lie guys they just, they just don't lie they don't have the, they don't have the capability and the capacity to lie we're talking about the highest suicide rate in the world and, and the liberals were trying to spin this to take away our God given Second Amendment right. Ah, oh, I love America. And I love my Second Amendment right. Right now, the Second Amendmenters, us, those who, who collect and bear arms because it is our God given right in America, we are being persecuted at an alarming rate. We're under attack. Hell, we're Jesus. Yeah, we're literally Jesus. You know? We are Jesus on the freaking cross right now. 
just being persecuted for our God-given right. That is, that is crazy. That's crazy. That's, that's crazy. To even think to fathom that. Listen, guys, I didn't, I gotta take a small break, but if, 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 if anyone has any tea that you could send me, I need like some chamomile, some, some gray or Earl, Earl Gray, you can send that to the P.O. box because I know you guys want the best for me, just like I want the best for you. That's why I'm here on the front line, keeping a watch for a vengeful eye for you. So on the website, and if you're on the website, then, then, then please check out the store as well. We have some some beautiful new keychains. They make great stock and stuffers, great gifts from grandma and all of that. We got some new t-shirts and mugs in there for you as well. You're really going to like what we're doing. Very, very, very comfortable, okay? They're the same t-shirts that, they, that, that, that Trump wears when he golfs, okay? I actually got them for the same distributor because I care. Because I've been tuned to my listeners and I listen when you talk. We'll be right back. And that's about it. Would you like some tea? Okay, because I could have had some sent up for you. No, you're you're fine. Um, I'm okay. You're fine, sir. Mostly it was for shine. I'll send in wardrobe. Have you seen the... Don't even think about talking to me or anyone else about that. Oh? I was up early. I saw this coming and I got the word out that you were sick. It looks completely unrelated. This may be a two-day illness. And this shouldn't be an issue by Thursday. Really? I know what you're thinking, but there is no need to address the other issue. Good. Because I don't really... I understand that stuff. That's fine. I mean, that's what their organizations and media apparatus are for. No one will notice if we don't say anything, and then there's no need to answer for it to anyone. I guess I should probably go lay down. For my health. For your health, yes. If you want to win. You and your campaign need to be healthy. Yeah, I understand. Brooklyn Aharo is the 25th transgender homicide this year. And while murder rates are going down in many major cities across the nation, hate crime, and this is probably one of them, is going up. And the rate of gun violence is going up as well. In fact, we're outpacing the next large group of countries combined. I'll say it again. The Second Amendment includes the word regulate. And the purpose of the Constitution is to ensure our life and liberty and allowing people to have uninhibited, unregulated access to these weapons specifically designed to end human life is not that. It's not that in reality. Conservatives, join us on the right side of history. People are dying and it is dangerous for everyone, but especially those who are underprivileged and underrepresented. How's it going, Peter? You hanging in there? Uh, doing my best. Aren't we all? Sorry for the hold up. We lost Sharon's top and, well, it wasn't good. Did you have anything in mind? Uh, I've never really been very stylish. Mm. You look good in black.
room's a bit dark in there. Yeah, it's really dramatic lighting. Yeah. Yeah, it was. Oh, so you've seen the space? Great. Um, just pick anything that you want. Um, you want to pay attention to the fabrics. Uh, softer fabrics, they make less noise and they don't take away from your voice. Um, how, how about you just do it? Could you? Um, I'm not, I'm not feeling well right now. Yeah, it's fine. Um, I understand. Um, I'll just leave my selection light on the bed for you. Open the door, Dad. I know you know. I know you know, Dad. Open the door! Open the door! You're a piece of shit, you know that? Dad, people are going to vote for you. They need to hear your voice on this. What, baby? What happened? If I have to be the daughter of a politician, fine. But it needs to be a politician who's on the right side of history, Dad. Around 4.30 a.m. this morning, a jogger's dog ran into a nearby field and found the body of a young girl. Lori Michelle Milner was 10 years old. She was a Girl Scout. Early reports are she was restrained, shot to death early this morning, placed in a sleeping bag, and thrown into the field. This is... fucking... This is terrible in ways that many of you don't even understand. Not only was little Lori Michelle Milner a Girl Scout, like the Oklahoma Girl Scout murder victims, she was actually named in honor of the Oklahoma Girl Scout murder victims. I'm at a loss for words. If this little 10 year old girl had died from a lack of health care in my home state of Oklahoma, I'd be talking about that. If it was because of recently rescinded chemical regulations, I'd be bent backwards about that too. But it's guns. It's usually guns. Who's surprised that it's guns? And I just, I'm hurt right now. I don't know what else to say. And I think Maybe some politicians <laughs> I should be chiming in right now. How dare you? How <clears throat> do you even do you even know anything about this girl? Hmm? What what's her middle name? What's your favorite color? When is she being buried? <laughs> can we can we get her spirit in the ground before we bring up taking away the very guns that her father could have used? To, to save her. Her parents are pacifists. I interviewed them for my college paper shortly after they named their daughter for the Oklahoma Girl Scout murder victims, just after she was born. But I don't think that I need to know her or to know her story to talk about her murder with guns connection to guns or to say that we need politicians to talk about possible legislative opportunities to help. Ain't this about a bitch? Ain't this about a goddamn bitch? You know what guys, is? It's, 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 it's all started off a little weird and something's just not right. Okay, it's, it's, it's not piecing together for me. You know, I mentioned the other day about uh, our, our friend from Kevin, Oklahoma, who's actually running for office. Good God, fair man, right? And uh, 
they had a story running about a transgender who had just got killed, right? Well, now, now they're saying that a little girl just got killed, a Girl Scout. And I'm going to be honest with you people, some, it's just all a little weird. You know, I don't even know what the story is. It's all a little weird and something's not right. And I don't believe the shit. I left my wallet at home. I'm not buying it. And not because I don't, I, I, death doesn't resonate with me, liberals. But it, it, it just seems too convenient. Hell, I'm gonna be honest with you guys. I don't think the little girl existed. I don't. I think it's all a made up story. I think this shit is a ruse, okay? This is false flagging all the way, guys. I'm taking it back to old school. This is false flagging. I mean, come on, people. Two back-to-back -back murders. I think we got paid parents acting like their parents. I don't think these people even exist. You know the craziest shit about this? It can even go as far as the police officers in this town. Because it, 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 either they're in on it or they, they don't know about it either. I mean, imagine that. Imagine that, guys. This is for them to push this non-existent gun violence. I mean, what are we even talking about? This is this is all fabricated, people. None of this shit is real. Like, what are we even talking about, people? This is crazy. This is madness. I'm, I'm not saying that this is true, okay? I'm just saying that this happened to come to light in the next couple of days, I wouldn't be surprised. And neither should you. Because I'm telling you right now, the something smells like shit. And where there's shit, there's a bull. That's a fact. That's, that's a God-given fact right there. That bulls lie. Now, of course, the, the, the commie liberals over at Neutral News are screaming and yelling for comments from these hardworking, decent politicians taking up our tax dollars and our time when they could be making a difference somewhere else. Fucking lemon. Fucking, I fucking hate you, lemon. Fuck you, lemon. No one likes you. Everyone hates you. You hate you, lemon. You hate yourself. No one likes you. What you do is not news. You get in front of a camera on TV and you go, blah, 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 blah. that's not real news. You know what real news is? This. This is the face of real news. This is why people come to me. That's why I have three million subscribers. Okay? Because I give them the truth. You saturate everything down. You're only good for a cup of tea, Lemon. And speaking of tea, guys, I want to give a big shout out to all my friends in West Polk, Mississippi, who sent that tea up for me. It was delicious, guys. And now, you know, we partnered with them, and now we have this tea on sale for you guys. Very, very nice tea. Very affordable. Well, for $49 a box, okay? You get 12 packets for $49. I've signed each one of them because I care about my listeners. Stay tuned. remember mom, right? Your ex-wife? My mother? It's taking everything in me right now not to come across this table at you the same way she did. That's not called for. I'm your father. The bullets match. It's the same gun. I spoke to a friend who spoke to a cop she knows. They kept it off the news, but it's the same gun. Okay, well, that's... I mean, it's... Okay, it's not our place. I mean, whenever they... It, it's unfortunate. Dad, do you remember 
when I said I won't accept anything from you willed to me that avoids the estate tax? Yes. I said we weren't rich and I'm not dead. Do you remember when I told you that my best friend came out as gay? Yeah. Day before your 14th birthday party. And do you remember me leading the push on the student council to increase the prices of the school vending machines to help pay for school supplies for the less fortunate students? Yes, I do. First time your name appeared in the paper. Article still on my desk at the campaign office. <laughs> well, I remember when you spoke at those restaurants, you said, if you ran, even though you're already speaking at restaurants, you would do so for family values because I was what was most important to you. You know you are, baby. I'm, I'm just having a hard time navigating it all right now. If I'm what's most important, and I don't want free, untaxed money, I want equality for everyone, real equality, I want to redistribute wealth to the poor, and I hate guns. How the hell are you navigating being a conservative for me? Look, I am not having this conversation with you again. Yeah, my father, the politician. This is gonna be really bad. Peter? Peter Shaver? Kill my last two is 10 2. Yeah, I'm sure this is all rough on you and tough to bear. <laughs> yeah. We're just gonna mic you up and. <sighs> I'll leave it off so you don't have to worry about that. And uh, we'll let you know when they're hot. All right, got it. Screwed me. We should have made a statement. I'm surprised to see you here today, being that you're sick and all. I don't appreciate having to sneak around town and into my own office. Well, at least we're telling everybody you're sick and not dead. I want to make a statement. No, you do not. I I'm going to make a statement. No, you are not. I'm the boss. It's my campaign. I'm making a statement. Thoughts and prayers. For a Girl Scout? And a transsexual. So you really want to do this right now? OK. Mr. Peter Shaver, sir, aspiring conservative politician from Oklahoma, are you aware of the death of a transgender person yesterday? Yes. How do you feel about the loss? This was the entire transgender community of Kevin, Oklahoma. Well, I'm... Sir, I'm the liberal left, and your murmuring and stuttering only fuels my desire for the facts. I don't think they would say that. Hmm. Okay, I'll just put you down for doesn't know what to say about the gay and the Girl Scout, sir. Oh, that's what I wanted to talk about. How do about? you feel about guns, sir? Huh? Little girl murdered. Um... It's not about... She was shot, sir. What does that have to do with guns? If elected, what do you plan to do about gun violence? 
legislatively, I mean, for the children, sir. No, no, wait, hold on. We said in the beginning of the campaign we weren't going to discuss gun legislation. Where do you think your commenting is going to lead? Conversations about knitting patterns or the weather? Seriously, Peter, we're at 23% in the polls. Name recognition is up four points in a week. In a week. We just need to let this blow over. They always do. And then we can come back to it from a position of strength, maybe in a debate or something, and we can separate little Lori from the extra stuff. You really think a Girl Scout in a field blows over? It did 40 years ago, eventually. So, eventually, election's three months away. I guess it did in Vegas. Yeah, you're right. It sure did. So, if anyone asks, thoughts and prayers. Thoughts and prayers. That's all we can afford right now. Mr. Shaver? What's next? You're good. After you. You look tired. Take a nap if you want. I won't wake you up. Heavy, baby? Heather's not home. After our nightmarish last two days, it appears that violence in Oklahoma has gone viral, with plenty of commentary on social media from celebrities and pundits, with very little word to this point from our state elected officials. We're still trying to figure out a way to verify this potential new news. But the parents of both Brooklyn Orojo and Lori Michelle Milner requested I share two things with you. One, 3% of the population owns 50% of the guns. Two, the vast majority of gun violence occurs to and between people of lower means. You know, there was a lot of crying, but that's what I can make out from what they said. They called me on a conference call together. Think about that. Exactly. And just this morning, 
I, I went to college with a hacker, a uh, computer specialist, and he texted me information this morning. He was able to verify that one of these anonymous videos did indeed, in fact, come from an internet uh, connection in the general area of Kevin, Oklahoma. Now, I don't know if we have the video. If we don't, I know it's been downloaded and re-uploaded to various social media accounts uh, that people have done that. So if we can, uh, please play the video while I explain this, and I'd really appreciate that. This morning, an anonymous, unverified in its veracity, or whether it's real or not, video was uploaded that seemed to show a male figure standing over and harassing a young female who was restrained and, and seemingly kidnapped. Let me intercede here, please. Lemon, Chris, I received confirmation from a police source that the videos are from the Kevin, Oklahoma zip code. I also, and we'll have to come back to this, just received official confirmation that the deaths of Brooklyn Orojo and Lori Michelle Milner have both been declared murders by the same killer. Again, the gun used in the murders has been determined to be the same weapon, a handgun of some kind shot from close range. And if you look there at the video, the male looking figure appears to be holding a handgun. This may be the same killer. It's possible, Alex. It's possible, very possible. This appears to be a live feed with a spotty internet connection, the kind you'd find in a small rural town. And this man appears to be walking in and out of his garage with gun in hand. But if somebody sees him outside or through their window, I mean, what could they do because of open carry? Yeah, it's an open carry state, Chris. If we tell people to be on the lookout for a neighbor with a gun, frankly, we'll likely get more neighbors with guns. Demons. I mean, you know, I, I blame Hillary. Hillary and Barack Obama. Barack Hussein Obama. That's why, that's why we're going through this right now. Hello. Hello. Where are you? I'm home. You need to get over here now. No, I'm waiting to hear from Heather and then I'll handle whatever we've got going on. Peter, wait. Someone needs to save this young white woman, this young woman right now. Someone needs to be a man. Pick up your damn guns and save this woman. Black Lives Matters would be out causing thousands of dollars of destruction for one of their nappy headed hoes. And you guys can't handle this? You can't pick up a gun and go save this young woman? You aren't man enough? This is America. That 12%, 12% of the population, who out there is man enough to do this? Now I, myself, I can't do it. Because my job right now is to be on this front line alerting you to everything that's going on. I have to be the eyes and the ears and get the information to you to make sure you're up to speed on what's going down in this country. So that leaves you. One of you, not me, has to be strong enough to go out there and do what needs to be done. Gunner, Gunner, I know you were just here. I, I need you to call me back and let me know if you've seen Heather.
phone's ringing. Local law enforcement officials have communicated they are reasonably certain that an intermittent string of viral videos have been uploaded from somewhere here in Kevin, Oklahoma. Their statement continues. We would like to stress to the public and the residents of Kevin, Oklahoma, that we are only stating that we have reason to believe that these videos are being uploaded from the Kevin, Oklahoma area. What we are not saying or doing is verifying the authenticity of the video or the acts that appear to be happening. Technically, we have no way of verifying that these are live events or that the dangers depicted in the video are even real. A local Oklahoma resident on social media is explaining that the garage in the video, that he believes the garage in the video, is his garage at his home. Meaning what appears to be a kidnapping video is broadcasting from, or at least being recorded at, his home. Here's the live video. Uh, video on the internet, you know, that's, it's coming from my garage, okay? And these people, God damn it. And I, I, I called the police and I told them, you know, my address. And I said, that's my home. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I told them if I get home before they get there, that I'm going to defend my home. I didn't move to Oklahoma for this shit. Show you a little what a good guy with a gun can do.
No. Given the still unraveling implications and concerns arising from the events of the last three days, let alone just yesterday on its own, many have come to fixate on our gun show today. AKOK has become a national lightning rod in the last 12 hours with many saying Kevin Oklahoma should not hold an event glorifying guns or allowing the purchase of weapons in the middle of a spree of killings in our town. Conversely, some gun owning residents, online political pundits, and state elected officials have stated or implied that any change would be an attack on the gun rights and ability of local residents to potentially defend themselves or ever return to normal. If anything, I think I might go to it and buy a few just in case. You know? Just in case. You know, I don't claim to know everything about everything. I don't. But what I do know about is for the last couple of days, I have been getting attacked and criticized by mainstream media just for having an opinion on what's going on in Kevin, Oklahoma. Folks, I'm, I'm, I'm just trying to tell you what's going on. I'm trying to help you open up your eyes to see what exactly is happening. Now, our good friend Peter Shaver is in there on the front line. And they are just coming at him every way. To think about what that, that American politician who just survived a tragedy is going through is unspeakable. It's unimaginable how they're treating him. He should be revered as a hero. But you think they're doing that? No. They expect him and the rest of America to just lie down and just roll with it. Everything they say. I'm not going to do it. I'm, I'm just not going to do it. And I'm offended that they would think that. I just feel sorry for you. And if Mr. Shaver can make it to that gun show, then I would be honored. And it would be a privilege to buy him his first gun. Hell, I'd buy him his first AK-47 just to show him that I appreciate him and his strength. This is outrageous. We're still trying to figure out what we witnessed yesterday. Hell, my colleague Alex had a miniature heart attack last night, and she's in the hospital right now, just from the shock of all this. And people's reaction is to buy more guns. I want you to understand this. Multiple major gun companies' stock prices went up literally moments after the trigger was pulled in that video. And they kept going up for the rest of the day. I know I said I wouldn't say anything, but everybody I know was sorry to hear about everything. And they really should have canceled that gun show. That wasn't your fault. Get up, Peter. Can I get you anything? Why are you lying on the floor? Stop throwing up on myself. Seemed to help. Shit. Don't say anything. I am so sorry. I don't want to talk. I'm sorry. About what you're about to say? We need to talk about this situation. You're not even here for her.
we need to talk about this situation in full. While you were trying not to throw up, things were getting way more complicated than you understand. She's only 18 years old. I've got someone you need to talk to. And a Democrat. She despised me. He's good at these kinds of things. He was my mentor. That's the part where you're supposed to tell me my daughter didn't hate me. Not suggest I see a therapist. I didn't know your daughter, Peter. You're fired. And he's not a therapist. You are so fired. Okay. But this is not about you. This is about everyone. My daughter's death on national TV does not make this about everyone. She was my daughter, and I fired you twice already. That's fine. But you can't quit. I know you can't understand right now, clearly. But I was referring to all the victims. Platform, gun show, everything. What? If you'd have just picked your phone up before now... Leave. His name is Mr. Shadow. He's a fixer. Get out of my house. He's going to give you a couple of hours. Then he's going to give you a call. And he's going to set up a meeting. Somebody has to explain to you what's happened. In light of this week's events, many have suggested a postponement of today's gun show. This in turn has led to increased awareness and interest in AKOK as an exhibition of gun rights. Hotels are surprisingly full, and ultimately, AKOK was moved to a larger facility to accommodate. As of now, events are underway. It appears Gunnar Brailsford, the young man who has been revealed to be Heather Schaefer's ex-boyfriend after her unfortunate death, is streaming live from the event, and we believe he may be giving his opinion about AKOK moving forward after this week's events. Five hundred plus people. No. Over eight hundred people shot and injured. At least fifty people dead. At least fifty people dead. Over eight hundred injured. What country is this? What country is this? You are a lying piece of shit. And I hope you truly get shot in your head. <clears throat> People aren't believing this shooting. People. All right? We, we, we're just not, we're not buying it. 
okay? What you got is a lot of crisis actors running around, falling all on the ground, screaming woof, and then they go and delete their Instagram and all the rest of the social media pages soon as they get caught. Here's what we know. Three days ago, 58 people were killed and 546 others were injured at our annual AKOK gun show. A few hours into the event, Gunnar Brailsford, a local resident and ex-boyfriend of Heather Schaefer, this week's second local murder victim, arrived at AKOK intending to make some kind of statement via live streaming video using a cell phone. But before he spoke, someone shot him leading to many others firing upon the shooter and one another. Kevin, Oklahoma is under a spotlight like never before. And there are growing calls for our local politicians to speak out against our state and national gun laws and culture. The National Guard has been mobilized, a statewide curfew is in effect, and school has been canceled. All four days of school next week as we all just sit in shock and horror. You know, I'm from Texas and I recognize a need for change. While I understand a lot of the pushback that I received earlier this week for calling on politicians around our country to speak up on gun laws and this country's relationship to guns in general, but we need leaders. And as much as I feel for, in particular, conservative candidate Peter Shaver, who just lost his daughter to gun violence, which many of us saw live, I join with local gun law activists in calling on him to make an on the record statement not just as a politician, but now as a victim. What does he have to say? We need to know. I fired you, Kelly, you bitch. I can't believe you have that thing right now. Why? Why not? For all I know, someone that no longer works for me could enter my house without my permission. Just another fucking grief groupie. Pete. Don't call me that. You don't know me. That's why I'm here, Peter. What? If I don't know you, Nobody who votes for you does. So you're here to insult me? That works in your favor, Peter. It's not a good time to talk about this. Then when is the time? You're going to have to make a statement, Peter. Every day you don't, the awareness of you rises and so will the fires. Fuck you. No. Maybe I'll just shoot myself. You won't. How would you know? 
I wanted to run your campaign because I can't read you. If I can't read you, it's real hard for anybody else to read you. I need to believe what you tell me, and so does everyone else. You told me you wanted to win, and I believed you. Anything you tell them, well, they'll hear that too. What does that even mean? Usually at this point, the media would have written your narrative. Days with no comment after Heather. It's understandable in a sense. Days and days with no comment about everything that's happened. They would have interpreted your silence and written you off, moved on. But they haven't moved on. There's not one news truck outside. Nobody cares what I think right now. They're all gone. If you had just picked up your phone once, you'd know. I told them we'd sue if anybody as much as approached you, let alone harassed you. They never go for that with all their, their First Amendment jazz. Then later that day, 841 people were shot. And you weren't the story anymore. But you're about to be. I do not want to talk to you right now. Get out of my house, Kelly, before I shoot you. I made one last appointment for you with the fixer. You can trust him. Listen to what he has to say. He'll help you through this. Five. Someone's gonna say it. Four. Three. Two. This is bigger than you now. Tonight, I have the unique opportunity to speak with the man whose name and circumstances have been the top topic of political conversation for the last three weeks. Everyone from politicians to activists has spoken about Peter Schaefer on his behalf and some have even spoken in his defense. Three weeks ago, a series of interconnected shootings struck the small town of Kevin, Oklahoma. The first murder victim, Brooklyn Arejo, was a 24-year-old transgender woman. Motive is unknown. The second murder victim, young Lori Michelle Milner, was a 10-year-old Girl Scout who, in a case of terrible irony, was actually named in honor of the three victims of Oklahoma's previous 1977 Girl Scout murders. Many expected all politicians and political candidates to have made some sort of comment on these events, but our interviewee tonight, Mr. Shaver, did not, and the right-wing media machine began to move in. Then, the third murder victim, 18-year-old Heather Shaver, Mr. Peter Shaver's daughter was kidnapped and on live television, no less, a local man attempting to prove the good guy with a gun theory of preventing violence shot and killed her when he mistook her for her own kidnapper. The nation was now fully tuned in to this small town's events while Mr. Shaver drew his curtains, fired his campaign manager and closed off in a bereaved silence, 
separated from the rest of the world. At that point, we thought we'd seen it all. Little did we know, nothing, absolutely nothing we'd seen to that point could have prepared us for what was to come next. In the days following the death of Heather Shaver, Gunnar Brailsford, Heather Shaver's ex-boyfriend, attended the local AKOK gun show to make some type of statement. The gun show had become a sort of gun rights event at this point due to the nation's intense interest in the town's gun-related deaths earlier in the week. But before he could speak, Gunnar Brailsford was shot by a gun show patron. This led to a domino effect of gunfire between some of the event's 22,000 patrons. From 10.05 a.m. to 10.15 a.m., approximately 1,100 rounds were fired, 58 people were killed, and 851 were injured. This is a tragedy, a gun tragedy. To this point, the only elected politician or political candidate in the state of Oklahoma to not make an on-the-record statement regarding these events is the man I now turn the floor over to, conservative political candidate, Mr. Peter Shaver. Thank you for reaching out to us for this interview, Mr. Shaver. No, no problem, Sharon. Uh, I respect your work and uh, appreciate the opportunity to speak on my time on these events. Well, thank you, Mr. Shaver. As a nation, we are sorry for your loss, and I think I speak on behalf of everyone on the show when I say it's most unfortunate your loss had to occur in such a public manner. Hello, you've reached the voicemail of Peter Shaver. Before you say anything, know that I very rarely check my voice messages. I would prefer you send me a text. Uh, however, if you need to leave me a message, uh, I'll check the message when I can. Take care and have a good day. Many activists and pundits have suggested that politicians, specifically conservative politicians' responses to gun violence, are too impersonal and avoid action or the real issue altogether. This is often attributed to their relationships with gun lobbies and them not having or choosing not to act on the feeling of a direct connection to the victim or victims of gun violence. This has led to many activists, pundits, and even those touched by gun violence and also some gun violence survivors themselves to call for you to use these unfortunate events to speak out against the nation's relationship with guns. Uh, uh, yes. Um, well, I know that, uh, as you said, uh, many people are wondering what uh, a, a politician in, in my case, uh, an aspiring politician uh, would respond differently if uh, if gun deaths uh, affected them uh, personally. Uh, but in truth, these last few weeks, um, I, I've gone through a lot of uh, of feelings and um, and emotions. Uh, and I, I would really like to uh, really like to send my thoughts and prayers to my daughter's spirit. And I hope the country will join me in doing so. Uh, nothing else can be done. And uh, I really don't know that anything else can be said. Uh, I, I really would have made this statement sooner, um, but with uh, people thinking that uh, politicians are, are hypocrites and somebody who would uh, respond differently if it was a death in their family, um, well, that put an expectation on me to feel like I, uh, I had 
to respond differently. And uh, that made me feel bad about what I truly wanted to say in support of my daughter and my family. And, uh, and that's not right. Say something. Sharon, say something. I live a very modest and humble life. Hell, this show right here is being broadcast from a walk-in closet in a spare bedroom in my very modest five-bedroom home. Four-car garage, but who's counting? You know what matters? Is that you guys are going to be back after this break. Three million views per month lets me know that I'm doing the right thing, that I'm fighting the good fight. And I'm going to keep on doing it, guys, because I'm right here on this front line bringing the truth right to you. And you know what I say comes to pass. We'll be right back. Make sure you visit the shop, though. Mm-hmm. 
A response like Peter Schaefer's just shows what kind of incredible man and leader, father, he truly is. This, friends, is a, is a rising star, will be a tremendous leader in the conservative party. Anyone who can stand his ground under the attack of the mass media that he has endured uh, and, and say the kinds of things that he has said, it just shows the kind of character that he has to run our country. You went straight to president. Okay. <laughs>